Bombshell news from the Trump campaign just moments ago. Corey Lewandowski is no longer with the campaign. He has been clearly the closest confidant for some time to Donald Trump. When he launched the campaign, you see him right there to the left of Mr. Trump. They have been side by side throughout the course of this. Uh, so this is big news. There's no other way to look at it. Welcome, everybody. Brand new hour of America's Newsroom now. Good to have you with us. I'm Martha McCallum. And I'm Bill Hemmer. Good morning. As we continue to look at this story, remember Lewandowski from New Hampshire gave Mr. Trump one of his big boosts in this campaign. After finishing second in Iowa, he won in New Hampshire, and that sort of has started to pave the road for more victories along and across the country. Fox News senior political analyst Britt Hume joins us now with his reaction to this. Britt, good morning to you. What do you think? Hi, Martha. Good morning. Well, it's a couple of things, Martha. One is that it seems pretty clear from what's happened in the past three weeks that the Trump campaign was woefully unprepared for the kind of national effort that the winner has to mount and mount pretty quickly once the once the nomination is sealed. Uh, there appears to be way insufficient money to compete with what Hillary Clinton and her team is spending on attacking Donald Trump. It appears that uh, in terms of you know voter uh, mobilization efforts and all of that that they're, the campaign intends to rely because it must completely on the uh, on the RNC. And Trump himself, of course, has wandered off into all of these cul-de-sacs talking about things that really don't have much to do with the campaign and making it hard for Republicans who are trying to support him to do so. So I guess someone had to take the fall. Now, I don't know what the interior drama was inside the campaign, what the infighting was and who won and who lost. But it's not at all surprising that uh, something had to give here. And besides, and what, what we don't know, Martha, is whether this signifies that Trump himself is about to make a major change in the approach of the campaign. That remains to be seen. Yeah, I mean, that, that's clearly one of the big questions. There were reports uh, out there that there were screaming matches between the communications director and Lewandowski. Um, you know, that story, as you say, will be told down the line in, in fullness, no doubt. However, um, it raises questions about whether or not the direction of the campaign is of concern to Donald Trump. And Corey Lewandowski, by all accounts, has been the person within that campaign who's been saying, let Trump be Trump. From the very beginning, well, perhaps so. But uh, I, you know, if he didn't want Trump to be Trump, it, it, it's not at all clear that Trump wouldn't have gone on being Trump anyway. Good point. If you, you see what I'm saying. Yeah. I would also say that Lewandowski, whatever his strengths may have been, and he certainly was loyal to Donald Trump, and Trump had a lot of success with Lewandowski as a campaign manager. But if you look at his background, it does not appear that he had the experience uh, and the and the you know the skill honed over years of national campaigns to run a national campaign. And it's not an easy thing to do. It's a, it has to be a massive undertaking with all sorts of intricacies and teamwork and lots of people and a big, st you know, you have to, it's a huge thing. It's a, and you've got to stand it up in a very short period of time. It's not easily done. So um, what, what, what it would appear that Trump needs now is somebody who's a very seasoned pro to try to pull this whole operation together and, and build it up to the scale it will be needed. Yeah, his prior experience had been uh, running a Senate reelection campaign in New Hampshire for Republican right. Bob Smith. Had never had experience at the national level in a campaign, but you know Donald Trump was the first to point out all along the line, Britt, that this is not your normal campaign and that we do things differently. And they had an enormous success, as you point out, through the primary period. But now you've got some skittishness in the polls for Donald Trump, and you Skittish have, as you indeed. pointed out, yeah, as you pointed out yesterday on Fox News Sunday, you, you get moments to reintroduce yourself to the American public, and during those moments, you can add to your numbers. That, right. that opportunity, as you pointed out, squandered since he got the nomination. Yeah, I think, Martha, that he's now, his, in the polling averages, uh, he stands now below where Mitt Romney ever did, uh, which is a bad sign because <laughs> Mitt Romney lost. Um, I would also make the, say to you, Martha, that I, I know that Trump has been urged to mount a voter targeting, you know, computerized voter targeting, micro targeting operation, which was hugely successful for the GOP in 04 and on an even grander scale successful for Barack Obama in 2012, which I thought was the greatest voter mobilization effort in history. Yeah. And Trump has told people who said to do that that, well, he doesn't really need that. He does rallies. Well, maybe he's beginning to realize that going around doing rallies might have been enough to win him the Republican nomination with a large plurality of Republican primary voters, but isn't going to be anywhere near enough uh, to win an election in which Democrats have kind of a built-in electoral college advantage. Yeah, I mean, when you think back in presidential campaign history, 
uh, to other periods where there has been disarray within the campaign, where a campaign manager has been fired at this stage of the game? You know, are there historical comparisons to be made here uh, that may shed some light? Well, I can think of Reagan in, 19, uh, in 1980 uh, fired John Sears, but that was back before the New Hampshire, around the time of the New Hampshire primary. Yeah. Um, and that was early in the game. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I just think that, you know, the, the Trump, Trump won this nomination maybe some weeks ahead of where he was expected to, and he needed, you know, to have a national organization already in place uh, and somebody capable of running it, and he didn't. And so here we are. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see whom he chooses uh, to come in and try to build this out, you know, make, to some extent from scratch, very late in the game. In the meantime, of course, he's getting pounded by the Clinton campaign, um, which has decided that the best way for them to win is to beat on Trump. And so far, so far, it seems to be working. And remember what happened to Mitt Romney, Martha, back in 2012. You know, he had a long struggle to get the nomination, uh, and he spent all of his pre-convention money. So at this stage of the campaign, where you have this opportunity to, to you know, build your support, he was tapped out to a great extent and was unable to respond to the attacks on him that had been begun by Republicans. You remember vulture capitalist and all that? Yep. Well, the Democrats seized on that, and they went to town with it, and it hurt him, and I'm not sure he ever recovered from that. Yeah, and uh, the Clinton campaign, campaign spending $45 million or something in swing state ads that are coming out against exactly Donald right. Trump, and he may have realized that he is up against uh, something that he's going to have to contend with. So, uh, exactly like, a, right. like a business manager, he may say, look, I'm going to make a change, uh, and we'll see yeah. if he can turn it around. Britt, thank you very much.